Good morning, traders and investors around the world. Welcome to this Wednesday, October 13th edition of Pre-Market Prep Plus. Joel L. O. O. Pre-Market Prep Plus with stock odds. Uh, Joel Alconan joined here by Mr. Rob Friesen, who has some interesting trade setups to discuss with us today. Let's go to the big board. And the big board has the big S&P 500 index in the red by 14 handles at 43.26. Crude, we got a level in crude for you crude oil traders at 79.50 area. One, two, three consecutive lows in a row, but popping above 80 bucks. High close to the move, 80.64. Gold, there's a gold rush going on, folks. Up $29.80 at 17.89. Silver, back over 23. Up 57 cents at 23.08. Bitcoin, that's flat. Down $85 at 55,750. Ethereum futures, they're in the green by 13.75. Let's bring in Mr. Friesen here. Mr. Friesen. We, yes, sir. We got some chop and some slop. What what stock odds have to say? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, some of the uh, ETFs were indicating to be down. We we are, we are entering into uh, mid month seasonality. Uh, semiconductors and things are supposed to, you know, over the next five days do better. Uh, you can go to seasonality and you can actually plug in, you know, your ETFs and see what is normal for October. Uh -huh. Um, but you made a comment earlier that uh, this market doesn't really feel that normal uh, to you. So, um, so we have to take that into account, what is actually happening versus what may have happened season seasonally. So what, uh, what are your thoughts? Why did, what's, what's going on there? Did you eat some bad pizza or something? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, I like to, you know, base my, you know, um, technical analysis and my thoughts on the market, you know, technically, I mean, I also follow, obviously follow the fundamentals, but technically for this quarter, um, now look at things on a monthly basis, things were setting up where, you know, a swing number that I had for the quarter, uh, the market's been struggling with and it struggled with it last week. It struggled with it this week. And, it was the first time that the market's been trading below a quarterly number. And we haven't done that in, in quite some time. So I just think we're, we're due for a little bit more of a, you know, extended correction here. I mean, it's always hard to call the top in the market, but uh, the next thing that I was looking for was how the street was going to react to earnings season. And um, if this is any indication um, how you're going to be treated when you beat by, I believe it was 374 versus $3, uh, JP Morgan. If this is any indication, the way that they're going to yeah. treat stocks during earnings season, then man, we got some tough sledding ahead. So it's a combination of technicals, um, this kind of feel for the market, and then just the way that I haven't looked at Delta, but just the way uh, as Delta, how's that doing? Um, that's in the red too, just yeah. Uh, wait, wait. I just pulled. I just pulled up. Yeah, that's in a red by buck. Well, that and, that, and, that one, you know, that one's related to uh, fuel costs and things, right? Yes. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, interesting on J.P. Morgan because normally when you think about earnings, so you're looking at you know what has happened year over year, quarter over quarter, and and you, so, so there's the headline, there's the results. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the stock moves because it may have already been factored in. It may have already happened. Information does, does leak and things like that. So the day that it comes out with blow away earnings doesn't necessarily mean it has to rise. What then needs to happen is we shift our focus to, you know, the future. So I don't think that the M&A area and the underwriting area is really going to slow down that much. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the earnings came was, was from, uh, mergers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we had on the fact that the taper, you know, is going to be in play and, you know, interest rates will maybe rise even a little bit more and they should make more money from that. So I would think that the forward looking would be, um, you know, a little bit more positive in, in holding that stock up. Um, so I, you know, in preparing for today, um, I had long tech, long financials, um, 
some long discretionary, long staples, um, long some utilities. I was pretty pretty mixed on all that. I had a few a few uh, shorts in in every sector as well. Um, I I was short energy. Not I didn't really choose any long energy because um, we're kind of we're kind of rolling over on that one a little bit. I mean mm -hmm. we, we should see some more supply and these we're looking forward to the bottleneck sort of uh, unwinding. Um, but I wasn't I wasn't sort of confident in being exposed to the sectors in an in a naked fashion, meaning that, you know, you've got a bunch of sectors that you're committed to. And then, you know, you you just hedge with ETFs or whatever like that. So mm -hmm. so um, I kind of balanced it out somewhat. But I also did some sector ETFs today short. Right. So um, I was short like. XLF and things like that, right? Against some of the financials that I had chosen long. Now, guess what happened? So the cutoff is 928 for yeah. you sending your orders. Well, I sent my batch, all my batch at 926, which was fine, but none of my longs went in this morning. I had a problem with my longs. So guess what? I only got filled <laughs> on everything mm -hmm. short. Like I'm, I'm only, I'm only short today. I'm, I mean, like everything, I'll, over a hundred symbols, just short plus ETFs, right? <clears throat> so, anyway, a uh, little bit of a problem thinking. Okay, what would be the best hedge? So I split the hedge between spies and diamonds because I don't uh -huh. know how defensive the market wants to be. So kind of like two, two pedals. You know, you you can put on the brake or so I can, I can swift switch the weightings between them, but uh, <laughs> that's my situation. Now, um, then I can look at, Oh, what's, what's a great opportunity. So, so I wanted to point out something here on XLF cause I had a good okay. short, I had a good short on XLF. Okay. Um, All right. And, I released um, the chart to you. I, uh, I think it's a good sort of discussion point. So let's look at the one minute. Ooh, going so, to the one minute. Yeah, well, I mean, because I was short from the open, right? <clears throat> so it, it did pop a little bit right at the open from where it was pre-market. So I got a little bit of premium there. But anyway, it sold off. And I covered into this bar right here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about where, where people end up not making enough, like I didn't on this one today, or... Uh, or making an assumption that the support has to hold up. So for example, 38 is a whole number, right? So you see how it, it got down there. I had my order placed in front of the 38 and it just, just about hit me and then turned up and I covered in that green bar. You see that one right there? Yep. So, so I covered, I covered in the green bar. So um, then look what happens. It goes down further. Now, now it bounces back a lot of times traders trade in front of whole numbers or areas of support that they think should be all she wrote. And like in, in my situation here, um, I thought that number was good. I leaned into it and I, it looked like it was turning. So I covered. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do now is reduce some of the profitable shorts and then I'll just reduce a bit of spy or diamonds. I have a choice there, right? So uh -huh. I can lock in some things just because the portfolio isn't what it's supposed to be today. It's supposed to have some longs and some, some, some symbols. What do you think long, happened on right? that? And it's supposed to have some symbols short. So, uh, you know, you got to you gotta make the most of what you're dealt, right? So you you play the, the cards that you're dealt. What do you right? think happened on that, Rob? Oh, uh, my, my spreadsheet buggered up somehow. So uh, it was, uh, I'll have to look at it later, but um, had things to do, so. Quick question from Eric M. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I saw T -T TLT up pre-market. Was there a reason that you still went long financials despite this indication? Um, well, I, I had I had some financials long <clears throat> and I had some financials short. And then I made up uh, the difference uh, with the XLF. As it stands, I didn't get filled in any long <laughs> financials anyway. Um, but um, yeah, I mean... 
I was I was looking at uh, all of the indications and and financials were holding their own pretty good um, in terms of the sector pre market. So if you looked at you know all of the stocks and remember financials aren't just banks. You know financials are we've good got point. you know insurance in there we've got up so if you look at if you looked at the broad spectrum it was holding up pretty well um it wasn't it wasn't the leader right like communication services was the top leader pre-market um you know the big like you got the google and stuff in there um and financials was maybe number three or four so it wasn't it wasn't the top top one um and I wanted to be a little bit diversified and I didn't want as much exposure to the money centered banks being that JP Morgan wasn't responding that well to its earnings, obviously. So, um, it, you know, it's going to lead some of the other banks, but some of the other financials are fine and that's what I select. Um, so you can take a sector and, and like grab all your stock odds. So prepare for the, for the, from the night before, if you want, or prepare in the morning, if you have time and you have everything side of sorted by sector, and then you can sort by, you know, industry within the sector and you have all your stocks ranked and you just simply grab the ones that you want. And in my case, grab and put in a spreadsheet, grab and put in a spreadsheet and then get ready to fire. Um, if you have if you have more time, you can always do a test fire like half an hour before, make sure everything works, and then cancel, and then you know make adjustments and redo it or whatever. But I just didn't have enough time this morning, so the orders went in at uh, nine twenty six, and um, my longs didn't go. Up. So I didn't have a single long filled, uh, which isn't a bad problem on a day like today. But you never you never know what kind of day it's going to end up being, right? Um, so so. You know, you might have been taking a risk on approach this morning. I don't from looking at everything. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad decision. We did have, you know, inflation data sort of come out, which does change things. And, and people are getting quite concerned because if you're a consumer at all, you're feeling inflation. I, I You know, if, if they want to say that it's transitory. When you're in something, it doesn't feel transitory. It feels like it's going to last forever, right? Like that's the real response from consumers is like, you know, and they're going to and they're going to vote with their their wallet if they're investors too. They're going to say, you know what, I, I need to reposition. I need to do some adjusting. I need to buy this group or sell this group or, you know, I'm going to I'm going to dump everything because we've had a really good run for 10 years. I'm just going to sell everything and, and then maybe I'm going to get out of stocks and go into crypto. I don't know what it is, right? Who knows? But, um, but the market is having one of those uh, Octobers where so far it hasn't been an up October. By the end of October, it could be different, but it has, it's in keeping with volatility. So you have to be a volatility trader. You've got to adjust to things, right? So that means there's lots of opportunity during the day. Yet, what did I show you guys yesterday? Spread relationships. Here's an example. Sure. IW, IWM was up um, like 0.55% and uh, it went all the way down to minus 0.55%. So a full percentage point reversal. And now it's back up to almost unchanged. My, if you look at IWM in relationship to some of the other ETFs, there was, and you're, and you're able to watch a spread. I don't know what kind of platforms you have, uh, but if you're able to uh, watch a spread relationship, you can even calculate it, you know, in terms of a spreadsheet or something. Uh, but it, it really gives you opportunity to look for that mean reversion within liquid market ETFs, which when there's a real move, they kind of all move together. And when we're chopping around, they can get um, like dislocated from each other. Okay, you follow cool. that? Like it's, it's no different than if you went into an FOMC meeting and you had two banking stocks on or two, two financial stocks, one long and one short, 
that were extremely efficient. Like they don't, they don't hardly move. Okay. Well, with an FOMC meeting, all of a sudden they're going to move. So that very efficient relationship starts to get dislocated and we call those anomalies. And there's an opportunity to short the one that's at a premium by the ones that it's at a discount and look for that mean reversion, right? Again, relationship-based trading, stuff that uh, Joel and Dennis and myself will cover in the Saturday workshop there. Um, you know, it's all having relationships, being informed with relationships, like evaluating things just based on relationships and then looking for that premium and discount. So during a volatile session, a volatile month, the opportunity comes from being the trader looking for things to be mispriced and then the elasticity to bring them back together again, right? So. Yep. So this, this lesson here was on like on price discovery. So um, some people uh, don't place orders in front of, you know, whole numbers like, like I did or cover in front. They, they wait for a number to be broken, looking for that price discovery. And you can see how dramatically it, it sold off. Now it's recovered. Um, so in that, you may miss some but you certainly get the better prices from maybe stop losses run, things like that. Like people just finally, you know, people might've been buying XLF because a lot of people just trade ETFs, um, you know, looking for, and they go, oh man, you know, JP Morgan had great earnings. It's going to really affect the financial uh, sector and I'm going to buy the ETF. And so they may have even gone long at the open. They may have said, wow, it's trading at a discount. I'm going to buy more. You know, I'm going to buy some, whatever it is. And then they finally go, ah, I'm losing money. What's going on? I can't take it anymore. And they sell it. And, and that often happens when you break a number. So that's why um, it's, it's not as good of a practice as you think. I think there's a lot of education out there that talks about you know, buying in front of support levels and selling in front of resistance levels. And I think that the narrative on that is, is kind of wrong related to really having an edge. So that's what the general population would think and do, kind of like what I did today, unfortunately. Um, but sometimes, you know, but if you can position yourself to think about, you know, where might be the, 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 the vacuum or, or you know the the air pockets and and where might be the stops run and how can i get how can i participate in that price discovery especially if you're already short right to participate in price discovery is like no harm no foul you know you're going to buy back your short um so so that that kind of gives you an advantage or if you're leaning on a relationship like you so anytime you can do something because you don't have to. I'll give you an example. Joel has uh, a collector's Stratocaster guitar, okay? <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, he, he wants to, no, he doesn't need to sell it. Somebody wants to buy it from him. They want to pay a really, really good price. Or Joel, for some reason, can't pay his mortgage and has to sell the guitar. <laughs> Two different at markets. which point, uh, for which uh, would he get a better price? When he <laughs> doesn't have to sell it and somebody wants to really pay for it, or when he's forced to liquidate? Uh, we all know the answer to that one. Right? And so that's how you have to think about trading. If you can lean on relationships, if you can, if you can lean on something, where, you're, where there's no gun to your head, you don't have to do it to really pick up some pricing, okay? Yep. So think about what, your relationships. Um, the, uh, that's one thing that uh, um, we discuss with, you know, with Triple D um, on the show a lot. You know, it's so tempting, you know, to look at a level and just, you know, the support level, 41. I'm just throwing an example. Oh, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. And you get the 41 and it, it, you know, 
turns out a big seller takes it through there, takes it down like to let's say 40, 60 or 40, you know, 40, 50. And depending on your risk rewards, you know, that might bump you out of the trade. On the other hand, when it comes back up through a level, right? At least you're, you know, you're catching it with, you know, well, let's say you catch it with the buy stop at 41. So then if it comes back up, you're still getting your price, but you're catching it when, you know, you got the momentum, you know, going your, your way instead of, instead of stepping in front of right. it. So that's just one variation. So, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I didn't have to cover this. Like I could have kept it on till the close of the market whatever. I didn't have to. So it was an opportunity to, to make an adjustment and it was profitable. Um, but I could have done better. So learn, learn from that. This is just a visible lesson and say, you know, be careful of covering. And there, there's actually another tell. And that is this, when, when something comes down to a level and there's minimum volatility, like it's just like a, a wet dish cloth and it's just not it's there's no volatility it's just kind of sitting there um it's more likely to break a support level than less likely it's when it goes down really fast to a level and then you see a, a sharp v, a sharp reversal you know then then that's often signaling the you know the end of the move but but if it's a wet dish rag uh eh, you know probably best to stay with your um, yeah, and there's um, and there's one other thing too, and I, I think you can uh, agree with it, agree with me on this, and then we can wrap things up for today. Um, but it's different if you're if if you're if you're trying to cover a short, right? If you're trying to cover a short and you get that level, you know, it's a different thing. You know, you could just you know maybe you're trying to exit at multiple levels. You could stick your bit, you know, you could stick your bit out there and get hit. Right. Instead of because that's when, you you know, sometimes you can get some price improvement. Right. If you got a big seller coming down. But if you're waiting to go long the stock, then the strategy that I mentioned about, you know, perhaps weighing it to come back up through your right. number. Maybe or, or more the other option is you divide what you really want in two. So you 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 yes. buy off of that support level that you think might hold. But then you also save some in case you're wrong. Now, the thing is, if you're wrong and it breaks, you're just going to get a better price, ultimately an average price. Um, but, uh, you know, if it if you're right on the first one and you see an opportunity that it's it's holding, it's turning, you can add that second one. You won't you only have to pay up a little bit, but, you know, that's another way to do it, too. OK, okay. let's uh, wrap it up. we got to go. OK, yeah, let's wrap things up. Uh, S&P's uh, did bounce off that uh, pre-market low that we had. Um that was in the 23 handle, uh, 23 and a quarter. We went to 1875, uh, and that was just a couple of points above the uh, the low that you had in that little flush that we had in the after uh, after hours yesterday. Uh, back up in the 4430 handle, uh, down only eight handles at uh, 4332.75. So another day of range bound trading. Rob, thanks for those tips. Uh, we'll be back with you guys tomorrow morning. Everyone, have a great day.